Reliability, validity and reliability statistics are related in important ways that you need to understand when you evaluate measurement scales. Let's take a look at this target practice example again and this is uh, the example of valid but unreliable measurement and uh, reliability quantifies how much the, uh, the hits in the target are spread around. So this is uh, quite unreliable because there is a, a lot of dispersion, a lot of spread uh, in, in these, these hits in the on the target. So uh, in your statistical software when you calculate coefficient alpha the statistical software uh, has an option that it can in show you how the alpha would be different if you omit some indicators from your scale. So for example uh, in this case we have five indicators, five shots on the target and uh, then uh, what will happen if we omit two indicators. Let's say that our statistical software indicates that the alpha statistic will go up if we take these two away. So we take away these two shots and uh, what will happen? Well alpha will go up because alpha quantifies how much the shots that are on the target are dispersed. So that's uh, now our new estimate of alpha. Did reliability actually increase? The answer to this question is no, not necessarily. It is possible that you actually had indicators that differ on the reliability levels and if that is the case then dropping a very a indicator with very bad reliability could actually improve the reliability of the scale. But it doesn't necessarily do so. Here if we assume that uh, these indicators were uh, all equally reliable then omitting data from the model actually uh, reduces reliability because reliability is a function of the individual uh, reliability of the indicators and how many indicators you have. So reliability actually went down but the reliability index went up because we are basically if we omit indicators here we are basically ignoring evidence against uh, uh, evidence that indicates that this scale is unreliable. So when you take an indicator away from the scale it is possible that the scale reliability increases. It is also possible that you are just throwing away information against that indicates there's valid evidence against reliability. So uh, is ignoring evidence against uh, the result that you want to have a good thing to do? Obviously not. So uh, this is the, uh, the thing that uh, Joe is discussing in his paper when he says that uh, there's a common misconception that reliability is increased when uh, you follow this alpha if item deleted advice given by your statistical software. So it's possible that reliability goes up if you eliminate indicators if those are really highly unreliable but it is also possible that you are just uh, causing a positive bias to your reliability statistic by uh, eliminating information that uh, indicates lower reliability. So that's, that's one thing if you omit indicators. Uh, Todd Little has written a nice paper about uh, whether you should or should not include uh, indicators and if someone is uh, saying that you should indi uh, drop indicators and you, you doubt whether that is a good uh, thing to do then this article by, by Todd Little uh, provides a nice, nice counter argument for the practice of dropping indicators from a scale to improve the reliability statistics. Another interesting thing that or important thing that you need to understand is uh, how the items are worded. So let's say that our we have a scale that is supposed to measure innovativeness and we have three items in the scale. Uh, the first item is that uh, we have released a lot of new products in the last three months. Then we uh, have the second item is uh, we have released a lot of new products in the first quarter of the year and then we ask the same question again. So uh, these three questions are highly correlated. Is that evidence of our reliability of our innovativeness scale? The answer is no, it's not valid evidence of reliability because these items just ask the exact same thing in slightly different words and uh, they violate the parallel tests assumption that test, uh, classical test theory makes and on which our reliability indices like alpha are based on. So um, the high correlation between these three items 
is not an indication of reliability. Instead, it is an indication that these are not parallel tests. You're just asking the same question again and again. And uh, that doesn't uh, qualify. So if these three indicators are highly correlated, it doesn't really tell us anything. And uh, then uh, we can also ask whether this actually measures uh, innovation level of the company or does it just measure how many new products the company has introduced. So uh, the problem with uh, developing scale items is that uh, if the items are too similar, then they are not parallel. If the items are too similar, they can also just measure uh, one specific fact instead of measuring the constructs. So we need to uh, develop our items in a way that they are, if we measure innovativeness, they are different observed consequences of innovators. So they are distinct different tests from one another instead of just repeating the same question with slightly different wordings. So these are the two most uh, common problems that I see in indicators, how you develop them, how you choose them. One is that uh, people drop indicators based on their reliability statistics. Sometimes it makes sense, oftentimes it doesn't. Also uh, writing items People ignore, they are, many researchers ignore the parallel tests assumption and what it actually means. Your items really need to be distinct instead of being the same item repeated uh, three times.